2024 marks the 30th anniversary of the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, an iconic part of the skyline. Here's 30 fun things about the ride. Stick around to the end for one that very few people know. In 2003, a Formula One car was strapped to the chassis of the big one and Ralph Filmerman drove it around the track. The car that was used is now sitting inside the station of the Grand Prix. Three lights, four lights, five laps. Pause. Go, go, go. And it's happened immediately. This is amazing. The big one is currently the tallest ride in the UK, but it's set to lose that crown for its 38th birthday to Hyperia at Thorpe Park. The ride was manufactured by Aerodynamics, a company that went into bankruptcy in 2001. They only manufactured five hypercoasters and only three remain, making this a classic. The ride actually features briefly in the 2017 movie A Monster Calls, which you can see on Disney+. Jeffrey Thompson, who was running the park at the time, rode Magnum XL 200 in Cedar Point. He decided he wanted one of his own in Blackpool, but bigger and better, and sparked the roller coaster wars of the early 2000s. Well, about four years ago, I rode on what was then the tallest roller coaster in the world, which is an amusement park called Cedar Point in Ohio. It was a first roller coaster at 200 feet, and it was just the most amazing roller coaster I have ever been on in my life. It was just enormous, and the first drop was just spectacular. And I said, we must have one of these, but if it's in Blackpool, we'll make it bigger. The ride has had some modifications over the years. Three years after it was first introduced, the first drop was reprofiled to take less strain on the trains and the track. Also, the turnaround was reprofiled, and recently there's been some small modifications to the track. We'll cover that later on. Theoretically, the ride can handle 1,600 to 1,700 riders per hour, but now that we only run on two trains, you're unlikely to see those numbers. After the recent closure of the Ultimate at Lightwater Valley, the big one now holds the record for the longest track in Europe. Since 2019, each closed season, the Pleasure Beach has been replacing sections of the big one track, working closely with Tazaker, a local manufacturer who has since set up a side company for reprofiling and retracking re old rides. You can actually purchase parts of the track, small sections for around £100, and actually if you look on the website you can buy full lengths of the track, but you need to make an offer because they just don't tell you how much that would cost. Pleasure Beach is known for being very resourceful, they don't throw anything out, in fact they regularly reuse things from old attractions. As part of that, when they reprofiled the big one's first drop, they actually kept the track and then when they built Valhalla, they used it to construct the original facade. People are always amazed at how much Blackpool can condense into such a small space and this was no exception with the big one. In fact, they were so restrained for space that Geoffrey Thompson's daughter constructed or designed the, the station and it's got a very unique transfer track. Typically, you will see a ride at the end in the brake run slide across and put the new train on. There was no space for that for the big one, so it features a vertical transfer track and there's actually three levels. You've got the main track, you've got the maintenance track below it and then you have the pit so they can store three trains vertically stacked on top of each other. There's some debate about how tall the big one actually is. Blackpool advertise it as 235 feet tall, and that's 235 feet measured from sea level. If you actually measure it from ground level, it is only 213 feet. Nowadays, when you enter the Pleasure Beach, there's one main entrance, but in the early days, there was multiple entrances, one of which, at the south end, had big dipper going over the entrance and when they built the big one they actually matched what's called Star Hill the same profile for the big one. What I think is really nice about it is that I think the big one was built about 60 70 years later and they emulated Star Hill into the big one design and popped it on the big dipper. 
One of the reasons that Blackpool has three trains despite only using two of them nowadays is that they can take advantage of different wheel compounds. So depending on the weather conditions, whether it's windy, whether it's a clear day, they have fast wheel compounds and they have slow wheel compounds. And by having a spare train, they can have the other wheel compounds sitting there so that if the weather changes, they can switch it. So typically they'll have you know, either two with the slow and one with the fast or vice versa, depending on weather forecasts. If you've been to Blackpool and you've seen the ride, you realise how gigantic the structure is and how much steel it took to construct. In fact, there was so much of it that they had to store some of it at the nearby airport because it was too large, and some of it was stored on the promenade opposite the Pleasure Beach. Look at this lot. This would have a scrap man slavering at the lips. Ton upon ton of top quality gear. There's more heavy metal here at Blackpool Airport than it's a Guns N' Roses do. I mentioned earlier that the, the ride features three trains. You won't see all three in operation nowadays. In the early 90s, when it was all about getting capacity and getting as many people on, and it was pay per ride, they did run three trains, and they had to turn those trains around in something crazy, like 50 seconds, they had to be dispatching a new train, which nowadays, that's just not possible. People take too long fiddling around on their phones, putting their bags away, etc. So the ride does have all three trains. They are fully serviced and usable, but you will only ever see a maximum of two on the track at any given time. It's not uncommon nowadays to see media reports of the big one got stuck on the lift hill and they make a big deal about it and you know people having to walk down. But actually, Pleasure Beach offers an experience where you can pay to walk that hill. In fact, they have two. They have the walk the big one, which is literally just walking up the top of the, the first drop. Uh, some great views, obviously safety harnesses, all that kind of good stuff. But they also recently introduced uh, Walk the Big One XL, which takes it a little bit further, as well as that first drop. You also walk, I think it's the first or second drop over by Infusion. You also get to go up the mid-course brake run, and then you also visit the, uh, the maintenance bay. So for enthusiasts, an absolute must. I still have not done it, but I do intend to. Um, but yeah, you probably need to have a head for heights. In keeping with Blackpool having to compress as much into a small space as possible, they actually occasionally have to move things around and as part of the installation of the big one, they had to reroute parts of the Pleasure Beach Express so that they could fit one of the support columns. This one is the support that caused us to have to re-align um, the PB Express track when the big one was built. Did you stand here? Despite losing sponsorship in 2011, you will still hear many people refer to the ride as Pepsi Max Big One. In fact, it still has two giant Pepsi cans at the start of the ride that you go through before going up the lift hill, but it hasn't been called the Pepsi Max Big One for 12 years. Interestingly, even though we have newer rides like Icon, the big one still is actually the fastest ride on the park, with 74 miles an hour on that first drop. In fact, on some of the leaflets it was advertised in excess of 80 miles an hour, but that isn't true. 74 miles an hour is that first drop, and it's faster than other rides like Icon. Over the years, Blackpool Pleasure Beach's social media team has got a little bit of flack for not keeping fans up to date. There was a lot of stuff around Valhalla, etc. But interestingly, they've turned that around recently. And if you look towards the end of 2022, they were doing some maintenance work to the lift hill. There was some scaffolding up. And they put a joke post on Facebook and Instagram stating that to ensure they didn't lose the crown for the tallest ride to Thorpe Park next year, they were reimagining the ride and adding an extra two feet. Now, I'm a theme park enthusiast and I love a roller coaster, but I'm not sure I could keep up with this one. In 2012, Richard Rodriguez rode the big one 112 days consecutively. That's a lot. 1994 became known as the year of the coaster in the UK. We had three major installations. You had the big one at Blackpool, you had Nemesis at Alton Towers, and you had Shockwave at uh, Drayton Manor. All three still fully operational and all three getting some TLC to extend their life. Big One has been getting retracked each year for the last four years. Nemesis is currently getting completely retracked. They went with the close it for a year and do it all in one go. And Shockwave is losing its USP next year. It will no longer be a stand-up coaster. It's getting sit-down trains. But all three from that historic year are still in operation today. 
one of the unique things about Blackpool, and one of the things I personally love, is how all the rides interact with each other. The most recent one, Icon, takes this to a new level, but the big one itself interacts directly with three rides. Icon goes through it, and big one goes through the Big Dipper and Nickelodeon Streak. It also interacts closely with Infusion and Steeplechase. I said earlier that you can pay to experience the big one a little differently if you walk up the uh, the lift hill. 2017, a group of, um, I don't know the right term for them, some YouTubers, uh, certainly not somebody like myself, decided to break into the park and climb up the first drop. Now, they went up it backwards rather than going up the lift hill, um, and funnily enough, the police were waiting for them at the bottom. On the opening day in 1994, the London Philharmonic were on the ride. Now, there's some photos of them with violins and all their different instruments. I'm kind of curious if that was a staged photo or if they actually went round the track holding and indeed playing those instruments. There have been a couple of minor incidents on the big one, nothing serious thankfully, but in July, the year that it opened, the brakes didn't quite work as expected, didn't slow the train down in time, and I actually ran into another train. A little explanation here of what happened. But in July, a train was held here and another train came and ran into the back of it. Nobody was seriously hurt, but quite a few people were badly shaken up. Computers don't break down, do they? So what went wrong? What they've since found out is that a sensor failed in the final section of the track just before the station. The logic controller sensed this and operated the brakes up here as a failsafe, which is what it was designed to do. What it didn't do, however, was to stop the train that was up here completely. So it ran on around the track and ran into the train in front, just in front of the station at between 5 and 10 miles an hour. Nowadays, theme parks in the UK don't open very late. In fact, the majority of them are closing around about 6 or 7 o'clock at night, if you're lucky. Uh, we do get kind of night rides in Blackpool where it's open till like 9, maybe 10. But in the 90s, it was not unheard of for the park to still be open beyond midnight. And you could, in fact, on occasions, ride the big one up till 2 in the morning with all the lights off. I would love to do that. Nowadays, when you go to the Pleasure Beach, you get your ticket, you enter the park, and you can go on as much as you want, as many times as you want, subject to the queues, obviously. But when the park was kind of in the 90s, when this ride first launched, it was on a paper ticket uh, system. So you had to pay for every single ride that you wanted to go on. And back then, the big one cost £3 per ride, which later increased to £4.25. Uh, with inflation, that would be £6 per ride nowadays. And given that a ticket is roughly £40 entry, if you've not got a season pass, you'd get six shots, six shots, on the big one and nothing else which that doesn't sound like a good deal. So definitely better nowadays that we've got this unlimited ride pass. In the 90s, a couple of newlyweds who loved the roller coaster so much decided after they got married to get them and their guests on the big one to the top of the hill and they stopped at the top of the lift hill to have a little celebratory drink before finishing the route. Pete and Julie want to launch their married life with a glass of bubbly at the top of the world's tallest roller coaster. 235 feet above the fray, they've stopped for the toast. Congratulations. Some confetti. Who's in charge of the confetti? Right. I think it's absolutely marvellous. Something different that they will remember all the life. Look after your missus. All right. you've stuck around to the very end, here's something that I don't think very many people know. As part of some of the recent work that's been done, it doesn't always go to plan, and actually if you look closely there is a section of the big one where the track didn't quite fit, it was a little bit short, and there's a tiny, tiny little bit. The smallest piece of track was manufactured to slot into the gap. There you go, there's 30 things about the big one to celebrate his 30th birthday next year. If you've enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend. I've been Chris, you've been watching Coaster Dad, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.